Okay, so now we're ready to get started working with Laravel Homestead and get a plain Laravel installation up and running. But what exactly is Homestead? Uh, well, Homestead is just a vagrant box, which essentially means a predefined system uh, with everything you need already installed on it. Uh, that basically just lets you get started with development. So the Homestead box contains Ubuntu, PHP, Hip Hop Virtual Machine, Nginx, MySQL, Postgres, Node, which comes with Bower, Grunt, and Gulp, Redis, Memcached, and Beamstalked. So this is pretty much everything you'll need just to work with Laravel and other applications as well. You don't have to use Homestead for Laravel. So let's get started and install Laravel Homestead. Now you'll need to bring up your terminal and you want to make sure that Vagrant is properly installed by running Vagrant and then giving the V option and you'll see uh, the version number just there. Now we're going to install the Homestead box. Now I already have the official documentation for Laravel uh, Homestead open so I can just follow this along. So if we just scroll down uh, you can see all of the uh, bundled software just there and if we go to the first steps we need to install the Homestead Vagrant box. So this will add the Laravel Homestead box to Vagrant. So we're going to go ahead and paste this command in and this will obviously take a little while depending on your internet connection um, but go ahead and install it, bear with it, pause the video and once it's done you can return back. Uh, but before this we're given a, a choice if we want to use VirtualBox or VMware. Uh, I prefer VirtualBox and in this case we're just using VirtualBox, I'm going to enter 1. So that's going to go and download that, we'll give that a minute to download or quite a while to download depending on internet connection and uh, we can carry on from there. So once Homestead has been added to your Vagrant installation you'll need to create a directory that will serve as your Homestead home and this is where you'll come to manage your local websites, change settings, uh, and more importantly start up your virtual machine so you can actually access your web server and any of the other services you need to. So I've created a directory within my home directory called web. That's uh, the directory I'm currently on just here. You can call this anything you like, but I tend to call it something like web or www. Uh, this is my personal one that I use and web is for the purpose of this video. So I'm going to open up a new tab here. Uh, you can see I'm already within this web directory just here and what we now need to do is clone down the Homestead repository and this contains all of our starter files and this allow us to manage our websites, uh, the different domains that we want to create for our local projects uh, and if this doesn't make too much sense or you think this probably is unnecessary we'll see how this works in just a moment. So this is uh, contained within the Laravel documentation under cloning the Homestead repository. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it into my terminal just here. So this will have created a folder called Homestead. Uh, you can see that just here. And let's go over to this directory and see what we have inside. So you can see here that we've got uh, things like Composer, a uh, Composer JSON file, uh, we've got a Vagrant file here uh, and a few other things which aren't massively important. You can go ahead and dig into them if you want to find out more about what they are. What we need to do though is initialize Homestead. And what this is going to do is create a homestead.yaml file where we'll be able to configure all of our sites. So I'm on OSX. Uh, I just need to run bash init.sh which is this uh, script just here, init.sh. And I hit enter and we see Homestead initialized. So we're now done installing Homestead and we can start to configure our sites, install Laravel and do whatever we need to do and just get on with development. But we need to open up our Homestead YAML file before we can actually get started because we need to configure our sites and where we want these to point to. And at this point it's important to know if you're not aware of what, a, uh, of what Vagrant is doing, uh, Vagrant will between your virtual machine and your local machine sync files. So we can actually go into our virtual machine on the command line but what we're going to be doing is eventually editing files within our text editor 
and that will sync it to our virtual machine, which we'll be able, able to access within our web browser. So again, this will become a lot clearer a uh, little bit later on. So our Homestead YAML file has been initialized, but where does this live? Well, it actually lives within a directory in our home directory. So let's just go back over to our home directory and it's within dot homestead. So if I list this uh, uh, directory out, you can see that we've got homestead.yaml just in here. So just to make things a little bit easier to edit, because this is the file that we're going to need to edit, remember, uh, I've opened this up in my text editor. So this is where we're going to spend most of our time when we're setting up our sites. Once we have set up our sites, we don't need to worry about anything else. Obviously, this is a long process, but once you are done, uh, you'll be good to go uh, and just get on with what you need to do. So the first important part of this file is the SSH key section, this authorized section just here, and this key section just here. So if you don't have an SSH key set up, you're going to need to generate one using the following command. So let's just head over to here. Uh, it's SSH key gen, um, and it's RSA. And then here you can just provide your email address. So in my case, it would be Alex at codecourse.com and that will go ahead and generate a key for you. In my case, I already have a just a general key here uh, and you may do too, idrsa.pub uh, and this is the um, private key just here. So the reason we use public and private keys is because we'll have SSH access to our server or our local or our virtual machines so we can SSH into it uh, which is really important because you will need to do things on the command line uh, particularly if you're working with Laravel you're going to need to use things like Artisan on the command line as well as install anything else you need or just generally uh, poke around. So we're now going to come to the interesting part which is configuring our folders and our sites. Now the folders section allows us to uh, specify which folders we want to keep in sync with our virtual machine. So remember we're creating files in our local machine, they're being synced to our virtual machine which has our, uh, our web server installed and all of our other services and uh, then we can just see them in the browser. So basically this area of the configuration lets us keep this very quickly in sync with our virtual machine. Now I'm going to pull over my web directory into my text editor here. Uh, just so I can create within here any folders which will represent uh, sites that I want to, to use or develop on. So these are just going to be folders for different projects. So inside of web, I'm going to create a new folder called sites. This is where all of my projects are going to live. You can call this projects if you want. And in here, I'm going to create a new folder called test. This is our test project. So this is our first project that we're going to be uh, putting onto our virtual machine uh, and using with Homestead. This won't contain a Laravel installation just yet. It will just give us a really good idea about how syncing and site mapping works, as well as setting up our domain before we get started with actually installing Laravel with Homestead. So in our test directory, we're going to create a new file and I'm just gonna call this index.php. And let's just say, echo it works let's change these to singles like so so once we have finished with this we'll be able to head over to our browser we'll be able to go over to a specific domain so in our case it will probably be something like test.app and we'll be able to see the text it works and then we can go on with installing Laravel so to actually sync our sites directory which is going to contain all of our projects so any other projects you want to create, you want to put inside of this sites directory. Uh, we need to map a specific directory here. So we want to map home directory web sites to home vagrant sites. So we're taking everything within this sites folder here and we're putting it within our virtual machine under home vagrant and sites. That's going to take care of the mapping when we update any of our sites. Now we come down to this sites section. So at the moment you can see we've got an example one in here, homestead.app. We're going to call our new project test.app and this is going to be the domain that we access through our browser. So we need to map this to a specific directory here and in our case it's home 
vagrant sites test. So home vagrant, get rid of this sites test like that. So this is going to, when we hit test.app, map to this directory. So there are a few other settings within this uh, homestead.yaml file, which you can go ahead and use if you really want. You can change uh, or add databases, but we're just going to leave this as homestead just for now. Uh, you can go ahead and add more here or change this default name. So obviously you can see from this, we are keeping in sync uh, this sites directory. We can have multiple sites here, which we'll look at later, but essentially it'll just look exactly the same like that with different domains and mapping to different directories. But we're now ready to actually launch our virtual machine, which we don't have running at the moment. We use Vagrant to do that. Remember I said we have Vagrant uh, there to easily manage our virtual machines. So what we want to do now is come over to our main homestead directory where our Vagrant file lives. And this is where we're going to boot up our machine. So we're going to use the command vagrant up to actually bring our machine up. And this is a vagrant command that will create or start up your virtual machine. In this case, we're creating it since we haven't started it uh, up until now. And you'll need to run this command from this directory every time you uh, restart your computer or turn your computer off and on. Um, and uh, it sometimes takes quite a while. Um, but let's go ahead and run this command and see what happens. So this would have taken a little bit longer for you. I happened to just uh, cut this short so you didn't have to wait around. Uh, but if this hasn't finished for you just yet, go ahead and pause the video and wait till you get to the point where the command finishes. Now, once you are at the point where everything is finished, we're going to actually scroll back up and just take a look at what happened at the very start of this process. You might have seen it as you were watching the command run. And this is the forwarding of ports, and that's really important to know so we know where to connect to. So for port 80, which is our web server, this has been forwarded to port 8000. Now, what does this mean for us? Well, port 80 is the port that's running on the virtual machine. So that will be Nginx uh, running at port 80. However, for us, accessing our actual virtual machine from our local machine, this will be at port 8000. Now, it's the same for things like MySQL, which you might recognize 3306 as the default MySQL port. This is forwarded to 33060, or rather 33060 is forwarded to 3306. And we have things like SSH as well. Normally, uh, web and MySQL are the only ones you're going to be really that interested in. But we also have a HTTPS here as well. So now that we know what port we're running on, and we know that we have test.app as our domain, what we can actually do is go ahead and access test.app on port 8000. Now, this isn't actually going to work. So in a minute, we'll see uh, a problem connecting. Well, this will probably actually take a while, but either way, uh, it's not letting us through. Now, the reason for this is because we need to add test.app and any other sites we add uh, to our hosts file on our machine. So we know where we're pointing test.app to. So we can do this within the terminal. So I'm going to open a new window and I'm going to head back over to my home directory. You don't need to do this, but I'm going to edit my uh, hosts file within my Etsy directory. So I'm going to use Vim for this. So I'm going to say sudo vim Etsy hosts and just go ahead and enter my password. And here is our host file. So I've got a few other things just in here, uh, but I'm going to add to this. So I'm going to add a new line from or pointing to one uh, 127.0.0.1 and we have test.app. So I'm going to exit. I'm going to save this out and that's now in my hosts file. And if we head back over to here, we see it works. So this is now connecting to our virtual machine on port 80, because remember we're forwarding port 8000 to port 80, and that's it. So how do we go ahead and just edit our project? Well, here I'm obviously working locally. I'm within my sites file, within my test project. Um, so let me just add something here. This is amazing. Now I've just saved this file out. 
But because we're mapping web, the web directory within my home directory and sites to home vagrant sites, and test.app is pointing to sites test, this is mapping this directory or syncing this directory as I make changes. So because I've changed this, connecting to my virtual machine now, it's just automatically updated. And this is very quick. It's, it's super fast. It's uh, This is what Vagrant does best, I guess. So we have now successfully installed everything we need to have our virtual machines up and running. Uh, we know that we can edit our homestead.yaml file. We hopefully understand what all this means. Uh, but what we're now going to do is install Laravel and then go on to look at some of the day-to-day -day things we'll need to know uh, when we're working with Homestead. So in the next part, we'll head over to the Laravel documentation, check out how to install Laravel, and we'll do that on our virtual machine under a new site.